Mobile Geek's coverage of CES 2015 is brought to you by ASUS. Hey, I'm rolling with Mobile Geeks right here at Sega's at CES 2015, and this is the Sega's V2, or V Square as they call it. As in case you don't know about Sega, Sega is a company from Utah in the United States, and what they're doing is basically they're trying to build your next dream smartphone. This thing is everything you can imagine to have in a smartphone for a reasonable price because this is supposed to retail for a hundred dollar less than the next cheapest smartphone from any major brand manufacturer that you know in the high-end area so my guess would be around four hundred dollars maybe four hundred and fifty but i guess less they're not saying it and they're still trying to work out the pricing on this. So what do we have here? We have a five, five inch screen on this, full HD, four, 445 PPI resolution that also supports this super high brightness mode that you might know from the Nokia devices. And it does actually look like a very nice screen. So you have a glass on glass panel. There's no air gap between the panel and the cover glass. What you also get, Gorilla Glass 4 on the cover right here. And when you buy this thing, you will get a free glass cover with it. So this one right here actually has the cover on it and it evens out the part where you have the... Um, the thing is, you put the glass cover on it and you'll see that this small gap between the top of the phone and the, the corners of the phone will be covered with the glass. So right now there is about like half a millimeter, maybe a millimeter of um, edge on this device. So when it drops on the screen, you are not shattering the screen. Um, let's go on further down. Again, super high specs, so we have the Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 in this case. So it's not the 810 yet, but still super high end. 2.5 gigahertz quad-core SoC in this case, including LTE up to LTEA, 300 megabits. We got three gigs of RAM in this, 64 gigs of onboard flash storage, but if you buy the device, you will get two SD card slots. So if you put 128 gigabytes in each of these, you will end up with around 320 gigs of onboard flash storage, or not onboard, but 64 plus 256 gigs of additional SD card storage. We have one single SD uh, micro SIM card slot up here, and over here are actually the charging connectors because this thing actually has wireless charging integrated into the cover um, according to the G standard. G standard. Um, what else do we have? We have a 13 megapixel camera with autofocus and optical image stabilization on the front of the smartphone, on the front, not on the back. Over here we have the light sensor and your speakers. These are Harman Kardon speakers on both sides, so you get stereo sound on the front. We go over to the back, you have a light sensor right here. This is a 21 megapixel camera, not from Sony, but my guess would be Omnivision or somebody else from Taiwan or China. Still optical image stabilization integrated and autofocus. There is your dual tone LED flash, so nicer skin colors. Let's move over to the side. So here we have the wireless HD um, transmitter, which is basically YGIG, but called wireless HD. It's another thing from, I think, Silicon Image that is. So you will be able to broadcast your um, image signals over up to 40 meters. I think that's what they said to your TV or an external display wirelessly. Pretty nice thing, runs on a 60 gigahertz band right there. Here we have the volume rockers. Those are machined out of aluminum, just as the power button that is right here. Down here, this is a side-mounted fingerprint reader, so you just hold it in your hand, swipe over it, and it will unlock the device. I don't know how well it works. My guess would be it's pretty much like what you get on the Samsung Galaxy devices right now. And down here is your hardware shutter button for the camera. So they are even putting in a hardware button for the camera that just about five minutes ago worked or it did not, depending on your luck that you're having. Thing is, this is still an engineering sample, so there is maybe the chance of working. Sometimes it doesn't, but they definitely have a working device right here, and it's all in there in this case. Let's move further around to the bottom. So we have your micro USB port over here. This is your 3.5 millimeter headset jack. This cover comes off, as I just showed you on the back. This is here, it's just a keychain holder, basically nothing on the left and on the top. Of this metal frame, you get your infrared blaster. These are the things that set apart the two cameras. And this over here is actually the um, noise canceling microphone. If we go over to the back, which is supposed to be made out of Kevlar or something, so it's got a Kevlar back, so 
you can switch out these covers with different colors. There's a ton of different colors, but you always get this Kevlar material. Down here, this is called a fractal antenna, which is supposed to um, blast up the quality on your signal, depending on where you're at on this planet. And yeah, let me just quickly check on my, my cheat sheet here because it's just too much in this phone. Uh, the USB port down here is OTG capable. We have, uh, let me see, a 3,100 milliamp hour battery, as you can see right here. There's also a power saving mechanism included that should make this thing last for two days. At least that's what they're saying so far. And they're also using a coating on the inside of the device to make it IPX7 certified or close to that kind of waterproof in this case. Um, what else is there? We have NFC integrated, we have gigabit Wi-Fi also, and we also get um, Bluetooth 4.0. Yeah, and that seems to be just about it as far as I can tell. But as you just noticed, this 141 gram heavy smartphone in its 9.7 millimeter thick case has basically just about anything you have ever imagined to have in a smartphone. So this has been the Sega's B squared, which should launch just after March, as far as I know, when the production starts running and pre-orders are starting when? Pre-orders are starting actually now, so you should be able to go to segas.com and try and order one of these devices for a price of, so you're pre-ordering a device of which you don't know the price, but we'll see about that. It should be just around $400, maybe a bit more, and yeah, this has been the quick look or the longest hands-on video I've ever done at a CES show so far with the Sega's V Squared. And I was rolling with Mobile Geeks, checking out this pretty awesome device from a pretty unknown company, as far as I can tell so far, that looks very, very promising because they have working prototypes. It's not some, uh, not some whatever wannabe vaporware company right here. And let's hope they make it actually, because this looks very promising, as I said. See ya. Mobile Geeks coverage of CES 2015 is brought to you by ASUS.